Hey, there we go. Good morning, good morning. I didn't even check my lighting. Eh, it looks pretty good today. Hello, hello. My name is Jeff Fritz. Welcome back to my live stream. Today is October 19th, 2019. 2019? No, today is October 19th, 2018. We're going to write a little bit of code today. Um, yes, Poetic Android. There were a couple of gift subscriptions yesterday from our friend uh, James Montemagno, and you were awarded one. Go back and check the end of yesterday's video on the YouTube uh, YouTube channel, and you'll see you'll see where you won a gift, won a gift uh, subscription. So you get the little purple mug next to you there. You get access to, and you already see it there, the .NET Bot emote. And we made a we're going we're going to make a contribution to Girl Develop It. Uh, yeah, when that pays out here in a little bit. Am I? Console lock test. <laughs> All right. So, uh, the color in that shirt looks a little weird. I wonder if it's because of the filter. Now I'm wondering. Now I'm thinking. Hmm. Hmm. Let's see. What can we do here? Let's see if we can clean this up real quick. I'm going to go to my filters. Go to my chroma key. Um, if I bump this up just a smidge, now I still get a little bit of, it's like the color correction on that purple shirt. Ooh, now I look really bad. Oh my gosh. Bring that similarity back down. That's not too bad. All right, we'll work with it. Show you the screen. Show you my screen. Here we go. Let's do this. And then we'll put on some music and we'll have a good time here. So if I turn off the chroma key filter. <gasps> see? Green screen. It's not real. Jeff's not really wherever. Uh, let's get some music playing here in the background today. Um, this is some music to code by. No, that's not music to code by. Um, let's see. I like this song. This is was originally called Chartreuse. There we go. This is more music to code by from our friend, Mr. Carl Franklin. Scientifically engineered to get you in the groove, to get you focused on whatever task it is that you might be working on. And you can get a copy of your own of music to code by at mtcb.plop.com. Or if you want to download the songs, if you want to set up a subscription and use one of his subscription apps, you can set that up at musictoflowby.com. Check it out. Thank you so much, Carl, for giving us permission to play a little bit of music to code by in the background here. Wasn't that Halloween? Yes, it was. Coming up, we've got Undead Coding in about two weeks. It's going to be amazing. It's going to be a fun time. I've got a number of sponsorships that are rolling in here. I've got a couple of swag packs we're going to be giving away from from a couple different folks um, and I've, I've got one or two more, more folks that we're talking to to see if we can do something interesting see if we can uh, get, get a couple of, of nice giveaways that we can raffle off here and promote and show some of those sponsors that hey you've got an audience here on this channel and uh, have a little bit of fun with them and I'm already out of coffee that's a terrible thing Fortunately, I've already preloaded my G Fuel, so that's a good thing. Um, all right, so here's what I need your help with. Hey, nerdy tech guy and ancient coder. Let's see, Sarah's here. Hello, hello. Turrican, yes, we crossed 4,000 followers this morning. Um, I didn't see who follower number 4,000 was, but we did. We crossed, we crossed over that boundary, and... Uh, Less than a thousand to go. We're actually out at about four thousand two. Four thousand two is the number that Twitch is reporting to me right now. So we are moving along. Now, Richard Keep, you were follower four thousand. Sounds good to me. Thank you so much for for joining us, for following along. Uh, we're gonna have a lot of fun here on the stream together. Um, now wait a sec. If you just followed, you can't be follower number four thousand. You're like follower number four thousand three. Something like that. Ah, whatever. Here's what. Here's where I need your help today. Hey, Midnight Tangent Ryan. 
And let's see who else is here. Uh, so I mentioned Nerdy Tech Guy. There's Molly and Joker, Len and BR. Good morning, good morning, good afternoon, good evening, and hello, future people watching the recording. Um, Alfonso is here, and let's see. Um, <laughs> looking up here, Shy Sharp and Coded Beard. Hello, hello. Show us the screen. The screen? The green screen? Is that what? what? Really? Do you really need to see the green screen again? I mean, I'll do it one more time here just to show you that it's actually there, right? So you can take a screenshot, you can fill it in, make it look like I'm doing something I shouldn't be. Okay, there you go. Um, <laughs> show us this. <laughs> All right, I'm putting, I'm putting the my background back on there. So here's what, here's where I need your help, chat room. Nice teeth. Thanks. Here's where I need your help. Our friend David Yard, um, he runs a, a little show called um, Technology in Friends. Technology and Friends. And um, he interviews people, has a little conversation, about 20 minutes long, talking about various things in the technology field. But he always ends the video with that person, that guest, on screen, and they say something, 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 technology and friends. So here's what, where I need your help. The moral constraints, that's right, it's totally fake. Everything you see here is a lie. Th there isn't actually a screen next to me with your chat room going by there. All right, so here's where I need your help. So as you may or may not know, here on Twitch, if you go to the bottom of the video, right? If you take your mouse, mouse over, not over my face here. Don't put your mouse over the face. But down where the where the Wintelect uh, logo is down there, when you put your mouse there, there's a couple of icons that pop up, and one of them looks like a movie clapboard, and it says clip. We're going to create a clip today here for David where I'm going to say whatever the line is, and I want your help creating that clip and filling up the chat room on the side here with all kinds of emotes and different things that we might say that's in technology for our friends, different cool things to say. It is fake, absolutely. Uh, well, so the background is my house. So what I did actually was I, while I didn't have the green screen up, I took a picture with my camera and that's what I use for the background. So there really is a filled up right? There really is a Philadelphia Soul helmet back there. That is the MSDN magazine that I first. No, that's the second MSDN magazine I wrote in. The first one is. Nope, it's not back there. That's my daughter's on the beach. My MVP. A beer stein. A couple other things back there. Screenception. Um. Thank you, DJ, is that DJ Lucid? Let's start coding, no more talking. So so here's what, but I wanted, I need your help first here. Phil, uh, let's put together a couple of chat messages over there, right, talking about a different bunch of different things, and we'll, we'll record a clip here, right? I'll say a couple things, and then you can click, click that clip button, and we'll generate that, uh, that little 10 to 20 second clip of me saying technology and friends, and your messages will be there in the chat room to go along for David's uh, David's video podcast that he's doing. Go, go, go. Here we go. All right. All right. Here we go. So if OBS get that DX12 support, we could use some ray tracing goodness. Let's get a couple more cool messages there in the chat room. All right. Ready here? I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to say the thing. Hey there, my name is Jeff Fritz, and I'm live broadcasting here on Twitch about science, technology, and friends, just like the folks there in the chat room. All right, go ahead, clip that. It'll generate a link for you, and it'll have a weird name on it. But go ahead and paste those into the chat room. And if you want, you can actually go out to Twitter and you can tweet it directly at David. And you can tag me as well. I believe he is D. Giard. Or is he David D. Giard? Yeah, he is at David Giard on Twitter. So let's see here. Let me copy his link to him. All right. 
So if you grab that clip, tweet it to David. Make sure you copy me. I am, of course, C Sharp Fritz. And we'll, uh, and yeah, post the link to your clip in the chat room. And uh, we'll have some fun with David. All right. Let's get back into it. We want to write some code today. We are, of course, talking about Ubuntu, which means I'm not working in Windows. I've been working in um, I'm working in Ubuntu Linux, so I've been using Hyper V to run a virtual machine. It's right here called Ubuntu. I'm going to start that machine. And I want to continue talking about where we left off um, about, uh, what's it called? About the hyperlink formatting that we've been doing for CoreWiki. So, has anybody got the clip? Anybody working on that? Otherwise, I can go back and cut it later. Uh, Svava Blount, hello, and Mr. Regs, hello, hello. Um, come on now. There we go. So I will log in. I didn't make this too secure just because it's it's a virtual machine that I'm going to throw away in a couple weeks, most likely. There's my penguin. All right, now we're up and running. Low disk space has only 250 meg left. Uh, that's fine because the VM has an auto-expanding drive, right? If I go to settings here, uh, da -da -da, hard drive, uh, virtual hard disk. If I inspect here, it should show me current file size. It'll actually grow as I need more space. So got an error while trying to make the clip. Was anyone else successful? Oh no. Mobile on mobile, that's okay. Not readable, zoom in a bit. That's, we'll get there. Let's jump over here to Linux. That's so cool to see that 4,000. <gasps> All right, um, I'm gonna open this Firefox now. There we go. I've got two of them. I don't need two, I only need one. Thanks so much. Let's jump over to GitHub and take a look at CoreWiki, see if we have any pull requests. I do have, now this is a cool feature in, in GitHub that I've seen. Yes, 997 to go. Yeah. Um, oh my. We're less than a thousand to go there. Hey, Brave Cobra. You know what? Um, can we take a minute here? Can I take a second? Let me let me stop the music. I want to I want to take care of something real quick. Um, you've seen me writing some code here over the past little bit, and if you've been paying attention, you know that there's a number of folks in the chat room that have a little bit of a vested interest in what we've been doing here, and I really um, I really appreciate the the amount of effort that some of you have really put in contributing, writing code, uh, putting together some bugs and things. So um, I want to make sure that uh, I recognize. Uh, folks for contributing. So Brave Cobra, um, I'm going to uh, I'm going to toss you a mod sword real quick here. There we go. Uh, congratulations! I want to make you a moderator because you've been doing a great job helping out here. And I also want to throw one over to our friend Sarah. There, she's a friend who's got a little bit of an interest in this succeeding. Thanks so much, and. Uh, I want to make sure that, you know, we, those folks that are contributing that do want to see us succeed and guide us a little bit, that they have the ability to help out a little bit. So uh, throw a sword over there so that you get a little bit of uh, extra notoriety, I guess. So thanks so much. I'm going to go back and start the music again. Um, there we go. Uh, now less. Oh, no. Now less. Yes. Now less than 997 to go. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, there you go. Thanks so much to uh, to Sarah to Brave Cobra certainly, and I want to make sure that Sarah is able to help out as well. So let's uh, let's get back into this. I don't have a good. I just wow. want to say yeah, and let's let's write some code. Um, so GitHub now has this really cool feature where it will throw you security alerts. 
um, to let you know that, hey, there's something here you should fix. And I want to make sure that uh, <laughs> the sword fits you well. <laughs> uh, I want to make sure that we address these. So this is a security alert that's telling us that inside of our uh, projects here, we're referencing ASP.NET Core app and we're using an older version. And the remediation says we should be upgrading to version 214 or later and that there's actually a CVE out here, right? A, a current vulnerability um, that says versions between 2.1.0 and 2.1.3 have an issue. They have a possible denial of service. So, um, those freaking GitHub alerts. <laughs> yes. New mods, absolutely, right? Um, there aren't too many folks with mods uh, here on the channel. And, and honestly, we've been pretty good about not having too many too many trolls wandering by but uh i want to make sure that, that we use moderator a little bit here um and it, there haven't been too many times where we need a moderator to step in thankfully but i want to make sure that we use that a little bit as recognition for contribution absolutely there you go the the bot mod <laughs> um so let's let's address this and then let's come back to what we were talking about yesterday around some of the link formatting and some of the issues, some of the questions we have around that so that we can make it, um, so that we can make it a little bit more friendly when you start creating links, when you start trying to pull together features and articles on Core Wiki. Um, so I'm going to open up my terminal. I'm gonna open up Visual Studio Code. I see I restarted my my, uh, what's it called here? My Linux, uh, Linux VM. All right, um, I believe, right, if I, now stop that. Unlock my key ring, do a git status down here, let's see. Yeah, I'm still in the project first start. I feel like I should make this change in the dev branch though. So I'm gonna run over to the dev branch. Um, there is an available update for Visual Studio Code. I'll come back later. I don't. You don't want to watch that. Um, let me head up here and let's let's see if we can change this and if it will just work. I'm actually going to turn on. I have this extension that'll run all of my unit tests automatically for me, um, and it it should just run them. It should just run them. Discovering tests. Here we go. Uh, while that's discovering, so Sirius now asks, "Hello, Jeff. How do you like Ubuntu? I'm enjoying it. Um, it's I've I've used Linux in the past, um, and I've I, honestly I haven't gotten too far out into some very Linuxy type things. But as a developer, I'm comfortable using using tools that are available to me here um, to build and deploy. You know, it's all right. I'm having a good time." There we go. So it looks like everything's green here. Right? I mean, yeah, I've got a bunch of everything's green. So all my tests still work. Well, now let's let's start to break things. Um, the report was that the uh, core wiki project file, right? There it is is referencing Microsoft ASP.NET Core app 212 and we need to get that to 21 Four. And I feel like we should also bump SQLite to 214. We should probably bump this one, the code generation to 214. Um, is there anything else here that we should bring along as well? Looks okay there. So I'm gonna save that and let me go back over to my test. Let's refresh this and let's see if it will rebuild the tests. <laughs> Turrican, thanks so much for resubscribing there with your Twitch Prime. Yes, three months in a row and you cross that boundary. Uh, at three months, you have a red mug instead of a purple mug to show the duration of your time that you've spent here. And of course, 
we make uh, donations to Girl Develop It for every subscription, every bit that's cheered here on stream. Thank you so much. Hey, Gareth. Uh, it's been a while. I thought we were just here yesterday. Is that... Wow. Uh, L6G Slayer. Now, is that intended to be Lag Slayer? Thanks so much for the follow. I, uh, I appreciate you joining us. Whoa! Oh my. Mr. Regs, 10 subscriptions gifted right now, and one went to the bot again. Oh, I wish I could take that off the bot. Um, thank you so much. Svava Blount, C17, Sven Vandenbrand, DJ Lucid, Richard Keep, uh, Changer No, Coded Beard, Dublat, and The High Redeemer. Congratulations, you all. Just got subscriptions, thanks to Mr. Regs. Very cool. Thanks so much for sharing that. And of course, every one of those subscriptions will make a donation to Girl Develop It. Thank you. Thank you. Um, very cool stuff. Welsh Ronaldo has a red mug now, too. Look at that. Oh, yeah. And every, all of those folks, you get to now use the C-Sharp bot there in the chat room. Oh, yeah. Um, and it looks like all of our tests ran. I've got green here. So it looks like we're still in great shape. Everything's able to run. So, yeah, yeah, there's uncommitted changes. I know. Um, so, not git. Let's do a git status here. So, oh yeah, and Mr. Regs gets the little uh, present notifier next to his name. It doesn't pop up on the in the video, but it's there on Twitch for everybody to see. So the only change here is the CS project file. Let's, uh, let's commit that. Um, updated ASP.NET Core dot app to 2.1.4 um, for security patch reasons. I could just say for reasons, but that would be bad. Uh, I thought I did it. Oh, it should be git commit am. There we go. And now I can push that was rejected remote contains work oh fine i'll pull first um da, 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 da. yeah that's fine okay now let's push cool uh let me jump back over to our project branch and i'm gonna merge dev down into here yep cool and now we're up to speed here in the project branch. Fantastic. Uh, with Fritzbot soon, we'll have welcome new subs with a... That's not a bad idea, Janesco, to have the Fritzbot recognize new subscriptions and and greet them, greet them with the emote. That's not a bad idea. Um, yes, Mr. Rex, I agree. Enjoy the, the bot emote to the Lucky 10. Um, I want to reach out to our friends at Twitch and see what we can do because the Fritzbot is actually registered as a bot, as a non-human user. What what we can do to ensure that when the gift subscriptions go out, it doesn't get one. It doesn't need one. But I think it would be neat to have uh, to have it automatically greet subscriptions with the with the emote. That would be fun. Um, let's, let's do this. Let's take that as a, I'm going to create a quick issue unless somebody else wants to create the issue real quick, but I'm already halfway there. This one has the same security issue. Look at that. Um, chat bot tests do not pass on the dev branch. I think we just fixed that. We'll take a look at that. Uh, maybe not today, next week. Uh, all right. Um, Chatbot should greet new subscribers with emotes. Should, about, let's just say should greet new subscribers. Uh -huh. And I will mark that as an enhancement. It's not a bad first issue if somebody wants to try it. All right. Coming back over here. So we've merged everything in. Um... Oh, and resubs. Good point, Mr. Regs. 
Good point. Um, go ahead, download now in the background. Yeah, see. Mm. I don't want to go through this. It's too much. Too much for right now. We'll figure that out later. So where we left off, you were you were AFK and missed the gift sub. Yeah, there you go. No worries. And don't walk away. <laughs> Welcome to the club. Absolutely. Um, so here we are back. We were talking about the problems with links in CoreWiki. Hey, John Unit Fberg, welcome, welcome to, welcome to the channel. Thanks for the subscription uh, with your Twitch Prime. And if you have, if you have Amazon Prime out there, you can turn that into a Twitch Prime subscription free. Just link your Twitch account in your Amazon account, and then when you do that, you get one subscription you can use free anywhere on Twitch on any channel. Um, if you if you do decide to to honor me by sharing your Twitch Prime subscription here with me. Of course, you get the Twitch bot emote, the C-Sharp bot emote, and we make a contribution to Girl Develop It. Hey, BitLaw. Um, all right. So we, were, we left off, we were talking about how we create links inside of a wiki. Um, that's a little bit small. Let's zoom in a little bit. And let me go to my core wiki repository here. I have it sitting in a dev folder right off of my home folder here. That's why you see tilde slash dev. If you're not familiar with some of the Linux or Unix directory formatting here, it's a private working folder that, that's mine. So I, I put it in my home folder here. Um, let's, uh, let's just kick off the web server. So it's watching for changes and restarting as those changes happen. So I use .NET watch run to kick that off let it run in the background here and just do its thing here. I added VS Code to the apt repos like here. That makes it update through the normal apt get update. Oh, cool. That's very cool. Now, looks like I actually have a little bit of an error here. I didn't think I had one. Let's, what do we have here? Net standard two, a razor generation targets, Microsoft ASP.NET Core razor tag helper cannot be loaded from the assembly, blah, 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 blah. Assembly with the same name is already loaded. Confirm the using task declaration is correct. Oh no. Hang on. That sounds like... Hmm, let's do this. Let's do a .NET restore. Make sure it has the correct version of everything. Okay. And if I just do a .NET build, we should see it there. Eight libraries, good. Processing, restoring. We should see if it errors out on something. There we go. That looks like it's running properly. If I .NET run, it should just... Yeah, there we go. So probably when we change the version of that, it didn't restore properly. I'm not just going to .NET run. I'm going to change it to a .NET watch run. So it's just hanging out there in the background. Um, you, but you added VS Code to the APT repos. That way you can do an APT get update. That's a cool idea. Um, I'm going to... Um, did I do it like that? No, I didn't. That's not a bad idea, though. Thanks for sharing that. I will configure that. There was another comment up here. Where did it go? Uh, so serious now is saying, check out the VS Code extension version lens. Let's uh, let's take a look at that real quick. So you can always find extensions, and there's a tremendous extension library available. It's under this little square thing here. Let's give some of Amazon's money to a good cause. <laughs> Thank you, Gareth. Um, oh my gosh. Uh, that is, yes, your Twitch Prime, it's free for you to set up. And we'll make sure that that gets over to a very good cause and the, the folks at Girl develop it. So we're going to take a look here at Code Lens was the name of the extension. Um, Code, <clears throat> Code Lens shows class's relationship with its interface and parent class in the form. That's class lens. That's not, what did we say? Version lens. 
version lens. There it is. From P. Flannery. Shows the latest version for each package using code lens. Oh, that's kind of cool. For NPM, JSPM, Bower, Dub, and .NET Core. Very cool. So if we install this, it's going to prompt me to reload the VS Code. 4005 now. Yeah, pushing that. It should update. Uh, 4004. The whole code lens API is why I prefer VS Code to normal VS for most things now. Um, I'll, I kind of agree with you, Gareth. There's, there's a thing there, and wow, it's taken a long time to install. There is a, th uh, uh, a thing there where Code Lens isn't available in the Community Edition of Visual Studio 2017, but it is here in VS Code, right? And you'll see the Code Lens appear right above, right above these method names. Come on, come on now, little fella. Right, you can see it over here. There's a little bit, but it should be appearing up on top of this. Now, why is it appearing like that? Hey, crows! It was 4,005 when you joined, says Sinad Meskin. Um, that's interesting. The number I see here, I wonder if somebody dropped. Ah, whatever. Probably downloading all packaging on all those repos. <laughs> There you go. Now you can see references coming through, right? And it updating with a little bit more information. Um, so let's check out, if I go back over to the csproj file, right? So that was, yeah, core wiki csproj. So the version lens should so it. Wow, look at that. Ooh, that's pretty cool. Fixed to latest. Now, I, I set up, there is... I set up for the core wiki project. Let me show you before we get a little bit further. I set up Dependabot. Now, Dependabot, yeah, yeah, yeah. Let me make sure I key that in right. Um, is supposed to watch the repository, core wiki, and submit changes, submit pull requests to show that, hey, you need to update something here. And if I log in, right, there I am, core wiki CS proj. It should have put together a pull request to say, hey, you need to fix this looking at the CS proj file. It automatically checks it and does that for you. So um, even if I had a version of VS that supported code lens, I would much prefer it to have an API. Yes. I can agree with you on that one. The APIs for Visual Studio 2017 are really hard to deal with. So Dependabot should be doing that check, right? And if I click bump now, bump trigger to keep an eye out for pull requests, it it should. Now, will it, let me click through to that. Yeah, that's what I want to do. It should give me some pull requests now for and I'm, I'm looking at this, I would expect it to give me a pull request for humanizer and diffplex, right? Anywhere here that it says fixed to, right? But have it give me an option to bump these up. Have I tried the .NET outdated tool? I've seen people talk about .NET outdated. It's not something that I'm, I'm looking at and saying, oh, we absolutely need to do this. Um, but .NET outdated is another tool that you can use that'll analyze and find latest versions of things. And there's a simple install script, and I love this about the .NET tools. .NET tool install global .NET outdated. And let's open a new, a new tab here. Where is it? I want a new tab. I thought there was, where's the thing to put a new tab? New tab, there it is. All right, so now if I paste that in, .NET tool install, it'll download, and .NET outdated is just a, a NuGet package that has a little exe in it that we can use. So now inside here, if I run .NET outdated, it'll tell me if there's any outdated package, outdated packages. 
You use Visual Studio Code for Java and Maven projects, find it easier to use than idea. That's pretty cool. That really says something. Here it goes, so now it's analyzing the various dependencies and I'm just running it against the core wiki project. Right now it's gonna say here's the various updates that we could make. Um, <laughs> Noda time as a patch, Netcore app. So some of these we could bump up. Right, we're at 214 here on ASP.NET Core app. We could push it to 215. There's a couple of minor version updates. So we can update automatically by passing in a dash U and have it push that up. Now, here's the challenge that I face. Uh, no support for FS Proj, says EJ Vision. Um, looks like it's an open source project. If we wanted to run it against, if you want to create that issue and discuss with, with Jerry about uh, adding that capability. Well, don't, don't just say, let's ask for, let's discuss if there's a possibility that we can add this feature in because um, without letting him know that there's some interest or some demand for it, he won't consider it. So if we do create that 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 issue, right, then we can start the discussion and, and maybe J Jerry says, you know what, I don't have time for this. Can somebody create a pull request? Or maybe he says, you know what, why don't you create, why don't you fork the project and you can create your own? By at least starting the discussion, we can level up our tools. We can, we can improve our projects together by just saying, ah, oh, he's not gonna support me. There's no blah, 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 doesn't like my favorite tool. That doesn't, that doesn't grow us as a community. But by creating an issue and starting a discussion politely, don't come out and say, darn it, Jerry, you didn't, you didn't create a project for me. What the heck it doesn't support my favorite tool? You're not, you're not gonna get there. But let's help out. Let's start the discussion. So EJ Vision, let's open an issue. Let's, let's say, hey, is this something that, that we can talk about, that we can consider? So, in, in fact, I'll, I'll, I'll even take care of that for you. Um, support for FS Proj. Love the outdated tool. Can we also use this with FS Proj files? And let's let him triage and see where it goes. You think it's not for this extension? Maybe. Let's see where they go with it. All right. Um, so we were talking about the way that date the, the way that the way that links are formatted and how we set that up and how we start running with those inside of Core Wiki. Um, Oh my gosh, there's a couple messages here I need to back up. I'm not sure how it is for C-sharp, but I'm betting since you fixed it to a specific version number, it won't push an update PR. But if you have something to use the newest minor semver version, it would likely make those PRs. At least in Node, if you have a package with a version number with the caret 240, it'll grab any. Right. See, I have to give it a version number. So... It, it's not a sliding version number there. Quoting Mark says, I tweeted Kendra Havens. Kendra Havens is one of the program managers for Visual Studio uh, at Microsoft after Ignite and uh, said that references of CodeLens would come to Visual Studio community, presumably with the 2019 version. Oh, maybe. I'm, I'm not aware of that discussion, um, but that'd be great to hear. I use Unity and Visual Studio Community, wondering if anyone else uses Unity but with Visual Studio Code and prefers it. Ah, referring to the version lens extension. Okay. Um, don't know about that. Okay. Um, Baffy, Baffy later, B A F I later. I, help me with pronouncing that. Welcome. Thanks for the follow. I appreciate you joining us. 
Um, so let's talk about the, the formatting of these these hyperlinks. It's a little bit weird right now inside of CoreWiki. Let's let's actually navigate here. If I control click, it'll actually navigate to that location. So right now, when I when I mouse over links here, you, you can't see it. It's behind my noggin there, behind behind my melon. Let's move this over so the rats. There we go. When I mouse over a page about SignalR, it's going to slash SignalR, right? Look at it right there. The format for that link should actually be, when properly using our routing, slash wiki slash SignalR. So we have to do a little bit of reformatting in our uh, processing, in our markdown processing, when we generate that link. So that shouldn't be too bad to intercept and do. Now, the other problem, of course, is when we click edit. Rats, I'm not logged in. I'm not logged in. Get logged in, Jeff. Log me in. Do, Do it. it. Thank you, Shia LaBeouf. When I click edit, that link, right, when I created the link, it prefixed it automatically with HTTPS. Um, so I think we still need to do some work on that. But this format is is the way that we want it to look. Um, so the question in my mind <clears throat> is when we render, yeah, see how it does the HTTPS there? Um, when we render at, in view mode, I wanna change that to slash wiki slash the name of the page. So let's go back to that. I'm going to open, I'm going, I'm going to open Visual Studio here and let's go back to the details view. And where it outputs, it uses the markdown tag helper right there. So that markdown tag helper, right? If you remember markdown, uh, I'm sorry, tag helpers are a feature of ASP.NET Core that allow us to format to process anything that occurs within a begin tag and an end tag server side and output that content. And right here is where we're converting markdown and, we're set, and we set the HTML content right there and we call this convert markdown, which is this method right here. And we, get a, we, we don't allow folks to put form elements so we remove those immediately. And we parse the markdown right here using using Rick Strahl's markdown parser. And uh, we do some regex replacing here to make sure that we don't have any, um, any, any custom tags. We don't have any issues with folks injecting some extra HTML that we don't want. Um, <laughs> okay. So I want to come through here and thinking out loud, right? Here's some of the attributes that we're going to remove. Um, right, and we're removing some extra HTML tags, right? Um, so we're gonna, right, we're gonna allow those tags, right? Where's that used? One reference. Right, if the HTML tag does not contain whatever tag we identified, we're gonna remove it. Um, yeah, there we go. All right, so what I want to look at is when it reformats and we have a hyperlink, right? It does sanitizer, sanitize. So we have an HTML sanitizer that's gonna clean up any of that markdown. I want to find where it does slash something that isn't wiki that it's putting into a hyperlink and change that. So I think I want to do something before the markdown parse right here. And I want to change that. I want to do like a regex replace right here before this so that when we do present it, it formats it. What do you think, chat room? Is that the right way to go? Can I get a little confirmation, a little nodding or something to let me know that, yes, Jeff, that's that's the right way to go. Uh, 
what do we think? I'm watching you. Sure, says Crow. <laughs> sure. Yeah, you go ahead and do that. Um, all right. Does the parser not have a base URL property? You want to put markdown, you want to put routing into your markdown parsing? Yes, that's exactly what I'm what I want to do, Brave Cobra. That and that's a good question, Mr. Magoo. Does it have a base URL property? Uh, let's What else do we have here? String markdown use pragma lines force reload. Hmm. Hmm. Good question. Uh, Rambling Geek, just watching whilst at work. We'll track as much as possible. Well, thank you. Let's let's go look at the West Wind Markdown Parser and let's see if there is any way for us to specify. So let's see. It's like West Wind Markdown. Uh, here it is. Let's see if Rick has a way for us to turn some of that into routing. M uh, markdown page handler middleware blog post. Well, I'm not using middleware, but parsing helpers. Markdown to string. Markdown to razor HTML string. Strip script tags to mitigate cross-site scripting. Markdig pipeline configuration. Ooh, look at all that. Hmm. Almost there. Markdown tag helper. So he has a tag helper that will do this. Literal markdown content. Markdown attribute and data binding. No, not quite there. White space, okay. Stripped script tags. Yeah, we're already doing a little bit of that. Page processor middleware, no. Startup configuration. Add markdown processing, no. HTML tag blacklist folder config. Mm, mm, no. What do we think here? Should this be a new method, single responsibility, and all that? Oh yeah, I'm gonna, I'm gonna jump out to do that. We could alter the routing to cover incorrect routes. Um. How do I know it's an incorrect route, right? As we add new features here around things like first start, um, I want it to ignore that. Well, I guess if it's a later route. Hmm. Let's see here. Uh, da -da 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 -da. No, no. Syntax highlighting, no. Um, if I were to go the way that Brave Cobra is suggesting, if you don't know the incorrect route after the fact, how would you know before the fact? <clears throat> I've got a little post-nasal drip, excuse me. Well, let's do that. Let's let's take a look at what, what Brave Cobra is suggesting here. If I go back to startup and I go to configure routing. So this add MVC with the add page routes if we add it right so there's the authorized area folder for identity if I add kind of a catch-all that does a redirect for the for details add that at the end let's see hmm All right, let's try adding that and see what happens. We'll add it as the last one. Conventions, not add, add page route. And it's it's gonna be something, right? We, uh, we're gonna route to slash details. And it's just going to be slug. I don't have anything after it. And should that pick it up? 
Um, suggestion for the bot. Maybe if the certainty that for Fritz bot is below a certain threshold, it doesn't display the comment. It does. If it's below 30% is what the current number is. But that's really for far off. We should bump that minimum certainty. Yeah. The sound is sometimes glitchy. It's because the, the VM is taking up so much memory. So it, it does glitch a little bit while the VM processes a little. So when it when it kicked off to do that rebuild, it uh it did glitch. So let me go back over here. Right? So it should have rebuilt. Right? And there it is. If I scroll up, we should see that it restarted here. Right, configure routing changed. So it already restarted. Um, so if I click this, it should try to load. There we go. Article not found. Please check the URL you entered is correct. It's also possible an article at, there, at this address, blah, blah, blah. Now, I'm an admin. I should have the ability to create the page. Good. Um, if I go to some of these other pages, though, it should still route through to them appropriately in those other areas. And it does. So, all right. You might be onto something there, Brave Cobra, that just changing that route worked. In which case, I don't want to do the slash wiki route. That slash wiki route just feels weird. Right? I don't really need this if I can do... If I can just go to slug. Right? So now I'll save. And then it gets a little weird while it rebuilds. Because it grabs so much processor. I could back off how much processor the um, the VM gets, and that'll certainly help. Right, so now if I go back to the home page, ah, come on. Oh, look at that. <clears throat> the build failed. It's that same thing here with the restore. weird you know what I mean if I just make that little change right now it's gonna rebuild well wait um, that's a warning on create article from link which we can get rid of that's strange while it's doing that I'm going to reach over to the properties on the VM and pull back a little bit of its processor. See, I've given it four virtual processors. Um, see, it's, it's, it can take the whole processor if it wants. If it wants. I'm going to pull that back. Uh, let's let it top out at 75. So it doesn't completely take over here. Um, Razor tag helpers could not be loaded from assembly. And look at it. It's looking at that 212. That's weird. Why did it all of a sudden... That's not restore. There it goes. Music is a priority. I agree. Nope. Got a little bit. If I dot net run... That should run just fine now. And that time it worked. Something fishy is going on. So let's refresh and let's see if my details work now without that slash wiki. So that worked. Right. Now see, it's going to slash wiki. See that? even though I don't have it in my routes now. So that is, where is that? That is coming off of search. And search uses the article row. Oh, look, it's got it hard coded. Look at that. Um, let's change this from an ahref. So if you haven't seen this, 
the anchor tag in ASP.NET Core actually has tag helpers that you can light up on it real easy. Uh, hey Andrew, is this an alternative to MediaWiki? A bit. Um, so what what we're doing here? Let me let me back up a second here. Let's let me make sure that that Andrew is up to speed here. Okay, what we're working on here isn't so much an alternative to MediaWiki. It's the same concept, um, but we're using this as a learning project so we can learn a little bit about ASP.NET Core and how to build complex projects, as well as how to use other features, other technologies, by bringing those in and extending this simple wiki project with those other features. Good example, we learned about CQRS architecture by integrating that and spending about a month learning all the various features and layers that we needed to bring in. And now it's gotten a little bit more complex. <laughs> so that's what we're going through here. Um, there's some hard-coded stuff, yes, that, that we're gonna we're gonna remove here and we're gonna remove this one right now. So it's it's not intended to replace MediaWiki, but to at some point give you a nice option if you'd like that. So the anchor tag, you can actually use these ASP dash attributes to specify and build out here's what the um, what you want your anchor to look like. Now there's actually, and it's not loading here, there's actually an ASP page one. And we want this to be the details page and I can specify ASP route and specify some other parameters to go along with this. Now I'm gonna specify, I believe it's ASP route dash and then other parameters. And I'll specify the slug that we're going to pass in here is, um, and we're going to, the slug is actually, uh, da, 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 da. we're going to test if it's the homepage slug. You know what? I, I could just say model slug. And it should just work for me. Right? I, I should be able to just, I think I can just do that because we're in C sharp inside these. Uh, nerdy tech guy, are these videos on CQRS still up here on Twitch? That's right. Uh, Molly's right. They're no longer here on Twitch. They've rolled off after 30 to 60 days. They will roll off. They might be if you click under the videos up top, but the YouTube channel, uh, youtube.com slash C sharp Fritz has everything that we've done. And in particular, there's actually a core wiki playlist you can look up there that has, has everything that we've done when we've worked on core wiki so that was a razor page we updated razor is interpreted so i should be able to just look at this now check that out localhost slash model dot slug that's not what we wanted yeah we need to put at model dot slug if i do that and refresh now I get home dash page better, but I think I wanted that if it is the home page one, um, don't output anything for the route for the slug. So let me change that back. If at model dot slug equals home page slug. Um, and I think we want to, if we put this around single quotes, because we're flipping back and forth between the, oh, and I've got that there. We need to get rid of. No, one single quote. Da, da, da. I think that's it. I think that looks good. Give it the old try there. Oh, I've got an extra curly brace. We don't need that. This goes with that one. I've got an extra. Try that now. There we go. Now that routes properly. So now if I create a new article, let's call this second article this is a second article create that all right so now it's at second dash article that's right if i go latest changes and i mouse over that it goes to slash second dash article i can click that and it takes me back good 
back to Homeworks to take me back here. Fantastic. So, uh, Brave Cobra, you you were right. Just remove that slash wiki and let's create a route and everything just kind of works. So I'm, I'm happy with how that cleaned up a bit. Good stuff. Um, I'm going to commit those changes here real quick. Um, let's get status. So uh, yeah, I will do a git commit dash am to commit anything that's modified and specify the message automatically. Uh, solved uh, URL issue with anchors in um, in in uh, Markdown by adding a catch-all route. Okay. Um, I'm not going to push that just yet. So that solves that little bit of the issue. The other side of this. Oh, Molly. Oh, Molly. It's not. You're right. I've been kind of using this project as a little bit of a catch-all. Oh, you wound me. <sighs> All right. All right. I really should move it into dev first. No, it's more than just git reset head. Right? Because I've merged all these things back and forth. I would need to go back. Oh, Brady. I would need to go all the way back here to EAD6 and merge that over. Yeah. Oh, I feel shame. Can you forgive me and we just merge this later? Please? Please, chat room, can you forgive me? Can you find it in your heart to forgive me? Otherwise, we're going to be cherry picking and moving things around. Get stream up. Now cut that out. <laughs> I see what you do. Yes, yes, yes. And you blow it! I blew it. I know. Oh. What am I going to do? What time is it? Where are we looking here? 11 11. Um, what's what's my schedule look like today? How late can we go? Do we do we really Let's see. At one o'clock, I'm supposed to have a meeting with. Scott! But Scott's Scott's on holiday today. At two o'clock, I have a meeting with somebody not named. Scott! Um, so I could go a little bit longer here today. Hmm. Hmm. Ship it. Works on my machine. I know. Throw him in the dungeon, like the guy from the the Bud Light commercial, right? That's why showing the current branch on your terminal is useful. Yes. I need to get that configured, and I don't have it. Um, I, I'm going to keep going and, and ask for forgiveness later. If that's so, if the, Molly, can you forgive me? Why not revert a, com, a Git repository to a previous commit? There's, there's... Oh, man. Okay. I'm going to open... And... Uh, um... If I were to git reset soft stash and then check out, hey, take Tycon Des, thanks for the follow. You're catching me here now as I've got to. How much is on git? Uh, uh, right, you're catching me, Tycon, as I've I've got to, or is that Ty? 
Ty Condes. Uh, let me know how to pronounce that. Um, I've done the Git log. But hopefully the merge will come soon. Uh, no, it won't. You don't want to alter history on public repos. Exactly. In the feature, it's it's already pushed up in the feature in the project branch. Anything still local local could be altered. Yes. Right. If I wrong. If I get status here, I'm ahead by eight commits. Right. So I'm actually. there but it was I started refactoring out create pages from links right solve the URL issue I mean I could bring right this was merged over from dev right these two are in dev I could just move these two, which is really just this, over to dev. Hmm. Uh, is that is that tr uh, truth? I'm not sure what the WK is, but truth asks, can you explain why you have to cherry pick in this case? I'm coming in new. Well, I'm not. I'm not going to cherry pick. I think we can just pop off this last commit and move it over to the dev branch. And what's happened here is I've committed something to a project that that isn't related to that project. So that first commit on create links is already in GitHub. It is not. It's only local. This one down here. Right, and the, the commit that I just pushed in there, right, if I look at that, um, right, how do I examine that? Right, how do I examine my latest log item? Right, if I want to look at the diff on that, isn't it, can I do, right, if I do git log head tilde one, uh, no, that's not what I wanted. Git log. I want this one. Uh, I want to do a diff against 9319. Git diff 9319. So here's what I've changed, right? I put the, I changed it so it, I removed the slash wiki slash slug route. And I added this route so it was a catch all and goes to the details page. So I could change that, but I do have other places where it is routing to slash wiki slash slug. Oh, this is a mess. Yeah, I think I need to to just ask forgiveness on this one because we're going to merge that that project soon. Soon. Um, I think that's where we're going to go here. Just ask forgiveness because it'll come with that feature set instead of as a... This is the difference, going back to what Truth was asking, this is the difference between working on a project versus doing maintenance on something that's running in production. That maintenance task of handling the hyperlinks because they weren't being formatted and presented properly should have been done as a maintenance task on our primary branch. I had done the changes in our project branch that was developing our new feature. So it's being swept up and being delivered as part of the new project when really it should be coming in as a maintenance fix. And I think for simplicity here, I'm going to stick with just, let's ask for forgiveness on this one. Just so we can continue moving on with writing some code here. You would cherry pick the relevant commits into a new branch and merge that to dev. That's that's an absolutely a way you can do it. But I think I've I've swept up some of the files inadvertently. We don't need to do it as part of this. We don't need to. If you had to, you can do that. 
I wanted to move on to the next, the second half of this discussion here that I wanted to get at. Oh no, don't do a revert. Merge that same branch to the first start project branch. Yeah, this is going to be messy. It would be very messy to do do that merge and cherry pick back and forth. So the the action that you would be taking is to let me show you because I I know what this looks like, right? I would check out dev. So now I'm on the dev branch. You would create a branch, right? I would do something git checkout dash b so this creates a tracking branch off of dev it starts with dev and we're going to create this extra branch and we would call it something like um, um, uh, fix links because that's the task that we're doing here the issue that we're working on right and if we want to stay with that very feature branch by feature or branch by fix strategy we would now do our work over here but we want the work that's over here to come from those other patches that we started in the project branch which is project first start so i would want to grab those individual pieces here merge them over and bring them over into fix links apply them make sure it works and then merge that into dev and then merge it also then back into um project first start right we would want to cherry pick the commits now, cherry pick is something that I'm not familiar with and I haven't done a bit of work with. Um, so I would need to actually do a bit of this. I could do git rebase. So git cherry pick allows you to pick individual files and changes. Yeah. <laughs> Thanks, Molly. Mmm, cherry pick. Um, so, right, do I, is it git cherry pick? And it's funny that it's called cherry pick. Funny, ironic. Um, <laughs> thanks for the cherries there, Poetic Android. Um, can I just say project first start? Uh, bad revision. No, so I need to go after, well, wait a sec. That's not the name of the branch. You're currently cherry, pick, cherry picking commit seven alpha dog. Nothing to commit, working tree clean. The previous cherry pick is now empty, possibly do. Otherwise use git reset. What you been working on today, asks Robert Tables. Yeah. No, I couldn't, I couldn't resist at least taking a look at what's involved. It's going to be a mess trying to go through this and get it, getting it to line up the way that I want it to. I'm back in first start? How'd I get back over here? No, I want to be back in fix links. Now let's cherry pick project first start. Could not apply solved URL issue. After resolving conflicts, mark the corrected paths with git add paths, git rm paths, and commit the result with git commit. Okay. So let's take a look at the status. Fix conflicts and run. Git cherry pick abort to cancel the cherry pick operation. Changes to be committed. See now what else was applied? Yeah, we need to cherry pick by hashes. Yeah. Uh, all right, so let's abort. 
<clears throat> Jerry pick. Right. So now everything's clean. I'm in my fix links branch. But I need to get the log from... Can I do a log on that other... On the other branch? Um, so I'm going to need to cherry pick. It's not just create pages from links. It's the... It's... I even did the URL helpers in here too. Yeah, I think we're going to have to just ask for forgiveness on this one. Hey, Brad, good to see you. Yeah, this is going to be just, this is going to be really tough to, to, to do. Um, yeah, I'm, I'm going to have to ask forgiveness on this one. It's a little bit too far off. And I don't want to waste too much time going after this. Um, so I'm going to go back over to the... I'm going to go back over to Project First Start. And let's start hammering away. The last piece I wanted to work on was the default formatting of a, um, of a hyperlink. Um, so right now when you when you're in here and you're editing a page right or you're creating a page and if you want to make something a link and you click the hyperlink button it automatically fills in https forward slash forward slash I'd rather it not do that by default Right, because this is kind of forcing you into a link scenario. And if I if I delete that, right, and save, right, it gives me narf and it doesn't go anywhere. Right, so there's that's kind of a problem because it doesn't actually have a page to go to. And if I key in something there, okay, great. It gives me a link now to slash narf. That is in the editor, yes, right? So I get the article not found and I can create the page. But I'd also, part of me also would like to, hey, source PHY, or is that source fee? Thanks for the follow. I appreciate you joining us. Um, yeah, later. You know, that's a way to force a link. Um, and I guess that's really the way we want to go. Every wiki should have a NARF page. Yes. There you go. But I'd really rather that start off with an empty bit of text there. Part of me also thinks if you write something that is wiki text, right? This is wiki text, right? That is in that Pascal casing, right? Double uppercase inside of one word there that we should convert that into a link to a page right let's convert that should be turned into a hyperlink to wiki dash text what do you think chat room so i want to change the default format of the link is that going to be very intuitive for people It's kind of a standard thing out there for wikis, isn't it? Right? Do people know what wiki text is? It's the wiki markup language. Wiki markup or wiki code consists of syntax and keywords used by MediaWiki software to format a page. So where is uh, links and URLs? Links to another wiki article, right? Have the, well, look at that, right? They've got the double. So there's that format for a link that I think people know. 
Auto automatically hide stuff in bio parentheses, automatically hide the comma. Yeah. Our text is marked down, not wiki text. You're right, Molly. Molly's right. There are other syntaxes. So, all right. So, you know what? Let's stick with our markdown preference. I'm I'm sold. So, um, I'd prefer if it not start then with HTTPS. So, it encourages a local article. Um, syntaxy? For other syntaxes. The plural of syntax. No, I think the plural of syntax is syntax. Um, so we are using the the editor that we're using. That JavaScript editor is where is it down here? Package JSON. It's not in there. Is it in Libman? I thought it's like Easy MDE. Yeah, there it is. Easy MDE. So let's see if there's a piece of documentation that says here's how you can reformat. You can make uh, let's see if there's a link to the project here. Ah! Homepage on GitHub. Fantastic. Show me. Um, links are now HTTPS by default. Yes, I want to change that. How to use. Please. Uh, element, get element by ID. Element, my text area. Editor functions. To set the content. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. I want to change the behavior of the hyperlink. Syntaxes. Syntaxes is what you call. You don't want to call an Uber. You want to call a syntaxi. And of course, syntaxes are available in uh, Las Vegas only um, in Sin City. Huh? You see what I did there? <laughs> see what I did there? <coughs> All right, it wasn't that bad. Um, auto download font, awesome. No. Auto focus, auto save, block styles, element, DOM element, no. No, no. Initial value for the editor, mm, no. Line wrapping min height, parsing config, no. Prompt URLs, if true, a JS alert window prompts, asking for a link or image URL. Hmm. Customize the text to prompt for URLs. Link, the text to use when prompting for a, U a link's URL. That's not bad. That's not bad at all. If we were prompt for a link or image URL, and if we were to put some text in that says, here's the text to prompt for the link, We can turn on spell checker too. Um, yeah, I want to change the link default. Let's see, toggle coding block now. Customize the toolbar, mm. keyboard shortcuts. That's neat, but no. Event handling, removing simple MD. No, 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 no. Spell checker for which language? Well, there's that as well. I rolled right past the option. I did. Um, defaults to URL for the link. That's the prompt text. Rendering config. Insert texts. Uh, let's go up. Insert text. Customize how certain buttons... Okay, well, there you go. The default link value is that. All right. So we can change that. When we say new simple MDE, say insert texts and then specify link. All right, let's do that. So that is defined in editor script. Ah, there we go. So there's my initial configuration. So let's add insert texts, put a comma there, and we want, I'm going to copy the default link one here, and then we'll change that. So instead of HTTP, I'm just going to put like that. 
so that it defaults to an empty block or um, some wiki page. What if we did it like that? So now when I click edit, and if I click that and click the link thing, and it says some wiki page now instead. So, hey, Sergey, I'm doing all right. We're, we're having a good day today. Crows asks, can you say hi to my friend? Is that pronounced Jelena? Hey, Jelena, it's so good to see you. Crows asked me to say hello. Uh, Crows is a little shy, doesn't want to say hello. So ask me to say hello. Um, so, hey, how's it going? Um, let me know how things are going. Uh, drop me a follow here in the chat room. My, here's where my GitHub is if you want to write some code with us. It's great to meet you. Thanks so much for tuning in. And um, is that enough? Is that enough, Crows? Is that good? Is that Yelena? Yelena! Sorry, I pronounced it wrong. Yelena, I'm so sorry. My name's Jeff. I'm, 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 didn't pronounce it right. My apologies. Um, I, I messed up there. I have a problem speaking. Um, thanks so much for, for joining us. Is that better? Yelena? Yelena, is that right? Yelena? Better? I have a feeling there's a few of you in the same room here, hanging out. There we go. All right, moving on. I think that's a little bit better to put some wiki page there so folks can key in whatever they'd like. What do you think? If that's okay, then I'm going to commit that and we'll go back and work on our first start project again. Where did, where did my mouse go? There it is. It's good? All right. Robert Table says it's good, so that's good for me. Let's go back over here. Uh, git status. I didn't have to do that git at, but whatever. Um, now setting a, a default link URL to some wiki page. Cool. All right. Um, so that takes care of that issue that I was having. Um, live blogging integration for core wiki. Got to come back to that. Um, so this, I'm going to turn down what Lithics had for us here. Um, we've reviewed and implemented this feature. Thanks for getting us started talking about it. And I'm just going to close. Cool. Um, <clears throat> all right. So we still need to talk about Azure at some point here, but that's not where I want to go. When are we shipping a new version to corewiki.info? That's a good point. It's a real good point. Does it is the dev version... Let me go over to the dev version. Let's make sure all the tests ran. Well, actually, if I just look at the code, right? It, the dev branch, I should have a, an integration commit and it failed. Why did it fail? Non-zero exit code on CoreWiki tests. Well, when building that, well, that's not good. We broke the build. Maybe. Maybe. Let's see what's happening here. Come on. What is this? Nah, no, go away. Don't want that. What's this one? Help. Nah, get rid of that one. Let's see what we got here. I 
So it was working before we popped up to 214 here. Yeah, something's right. I'm not even getting the test running here. So something's not building properly. So let's, uh, can I .NET build from here because it's got the solution file? Yeah, good. That version bump is giving me trouble. You're right. Well, that looked like it ran properly. Um, okay. So let's go down into corewiki.test because that, that ran. If I run .NET test, this uses XUnit for its tests. It should build and come back and say tests ran successfully. 40 for 40. So we're good. A broken build and ship it on a Friday. Hey, let's do a production deploy at around 4.30 p.m. Why not? Listen, listen. Robert Tables, I have full faith that we can do this because... But what I do have are a very particular set of skills. Very particular. Skills I've acquired over a very long career. Very long career. I've been doing this for a long time. I know how to break the build when I want to break the darn build. All right. Um, so this looks like it's running on my machine. Um, and if I run a git status against dev, I'm up to speed there, which tells me that that's a lie. I mean, .NET EXE failed with code one. Well, why did it fail? Right? Build succeeded, restore completed, doing the thing, pushing all the stuff around. Um, so there's a warning on create article from link. Now, why is it saying build failed? One warning, one error. Where's the error? Where is the error? Zero warnings. So here's the build on test. Restore operation started and it does its thing. Eight libraries restored. Begin processing bundle config. Warning. Look at that, it's on the 212. But where's the, I don't see error here. Liam should follow this stream. <laughs> if DevOps is set up correctly, it should not deploy. I don't have a build, um, I don't have a build pipeline set up. But then again, if things are coded correctly, they shouldn't break. Oh, snap. Does it treat warnings as errors? I don't think so. Looking down here, one error, and it's on Oh, look at this. Here you go. Error MS. Ugh. Tasks Razor Generate. And that's coming out of ASP.NET Core Razor Design. Could not be loaded for. Yeah, that's not me. That's Razor Tasks. All right, so this tells me that there's a restore that it's, re, it, that it's reusing and. It's getting a wrong version. That's a library conflict. Yeah, yeah. Um, so how do we force it to use a new... I don't want to download the logs. If I go to here... Oh, Brady. Um... <laughs> Oh, I'm not signed in. Hang on, sign in. Hey, cool. There I am. Um, so if I click edit on this, I think I have it set up. 
to try and use yes I did just say oh Brady you know Brady Brady like that Brady um all right so restore 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 feeds I select here feeds my nuget config it's it does have a local cache that it must be pulling from it's gotta let's let's check let's check that test project and make sure it doesn't have test SDK no we're okay on those. So somewhere, select a source, dev. I wanna, you know what? Let's mark this as clean, true to start. All build directories. Let's see if that cl cleans it up. No, 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 not not number 12 in New England. Wrong Brady. We don't like that Brady in anywhere outside of Boston. Boston. Uh, all right, so my build has been queued, so it should have it all clean and ready to go for us. Yeah, you, you know what I mean, Welsh Ronaldo. You know exactly what I mean. Uh, uh, thank you, Robert Tables, for that kind cheer. Um, of course, we will make a donation to Girl Develop It for that. Thank you so much. <laughs> uh, there we go. Now it's building. We should see it get down into that test and run properly. And... Um, do we want to do a deploy from... I feel like I want to do deploys from master. So that I can kind of say, if it's been pushed into the master branch, it's ready to go, it's ready to deploy. And that's a release. Um, does NPM get cached between builds? Yeah, it does. So this should... Right, oh man, look at this. And I feel like... Yeah, look at that. Woo, taking its good old time. Hmm. Go, go. But the what I worry about, and what I want to make sure that we don't clobber entirely, is that when we do deploy, right? Let me. Hmm, where, how can I do this best? Ah, there we go. When we do deploy, I want to make sure that we don't push out a new version of our database files. Yeah, it's empty over here. Okay. Because I don't want to overwrite the database files that are out there in the production space. So I feel like as long as this compiles properly, we should be able to deploy to that production space, to corewiki.info. And I think that'll be uh, pretty good. Um, now, this Jeff Fritz account doesn't have access to the Azure accounts of the other Jeff Fritz. There's multiple Jeffs? Yeah, yeah, there are. It's a thing. That's really taking a long time. What the heck is it doing? Come on, do the thing go yeah see it's populating the cache now oh boy all right I'm gonna let that ride um, so the feature that we've been trying to work on is around this concept of first start now that we got that that bug fixed but we want to have a migration or a first start wizard that pops up and prompts you and says, hey, you're not configured yet. Let's let's get some selections. Let's get you 
ready to go here so that you can run this properly. Um, so I am going to go back to my previous branch. Um, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Now we have this concept of the first start project that's going, it's a razor, it's a razor class library that has some information that we've configured here so that when first start is incomplete, and I'm going to force it by just saying true. <laughs> it was him. It was the one-armed man. Um, I should, assuming this restarts properly, um, let's go back to Firefox. This one. It should route me. What the heck is that? Try that again. The other Jeff Fritz. It wasn't him. It was the one-armed man. Yeah. Him. Let's let this get running again. Context ID 32 should have been in the... What? The heck is that? Weird. Not like this. Not like this. Your kit. Now I've got the same, the exact same stupid. Okay. We'll be fine. Somewhere it's pulling a 212 version of Microsoft ASP.NET Core Razor design. That's not anywhere. It's in those tag helpers. Now, I thought we changed this, right? Oh, wait, I'm in the Entity Framework CS Proj. Still. Let's bump all those up. Here's the first start. Oh, you know what? Yep. Bump that up. And that should really be... Well, we'll deal with that. ASP.NET Core Razor. Bump that up. That's fine. That needs to go up. Okay. Yeah. Needs that package consolidation. I agree. All right. So now let's try because I think we now have the versions reconciled. Nope. <clears throat> Son of a gun. Where the heck is it pulling that from? I mean, I tried to update. All right, hang on. Let's try the .NET outdated and see where it, where it gets cranky here. I tried going into the notifications project. Dev core wiki core wiki CS proj. It's right. So in here in notifications, right there's the CS proj. 
Those are all latest, except for the send grid capabilities, which I'm not too worried about. And then over here, we bump this one up as well. So we've, we've pushed everything up, right? Application insights, no problem. This one wants to go to 215. I'm not going to jump all over that one. That's fine. That's fine. I'm, yeah, I'm on clean the NuGet cache. That's not something I should have to do, right? This, I think, is... I would describe this as a failure in the tooling because it's it's making it... Even though I've hard-coded and specified a version that I want, it's grabbing the wrong version. That's an issue. That's... Yeah. It, it's making it... Right, if I, it's a uh, .NET NuGet, right? And I can go in and I can start to, I can delete a package from the server. That's not what I want to do. I'm going to do .NET NuGet locals, and then I'm going to end up, I want to be able to clear it. Uh, let's just say all clear and rebuild the cache. And restore. Let's have it re-download everything. Yeah. Come on. Right, because that's exactly what we're telling this to do. And it still failed. And I'm willing to bet it's got the exact same issue. Not that warning, it's this right here. Razor Design 212. And there it is again. And it's grabbing the wrong one. Right? Look at this. The ASP.NET Core Razor Design Code Generation Targets could not be loaded from the assembly. User share. .NET SDK NuGet fallback folder. Razor Design 212. .NET Standard. Oh my Assembly with the same name is already loaded. Confirm the using task declaration is correct. Yeah, we're fighting with... I'm on the 21401 SDK. I want to nuke that NuGet fallback folder. Um, so I have the 215 runtime installed. I have the 21403 SDK installed as well. See, and there's also no way for me to download the SDK that's sitting in that global JSON. Right? I can't do .NET install SDK 21403. It doesn't know how to do that. That's, is this live? Is what live? The video is live. Yes. Hi, Viable Clan member. Hello. Welcome. We do it all live. Where is it? Where is it? I've got that. Everything's live. Um, <laughs> what do you mean bump ASP.NET Core app? Give me, give me some. Push it up to the two one five. I'll push it up to the two one five. Sure. Uh, where's the CS proj? There it is. So there it is. If I push that to two one five. There's 214 for co-generation design. That's the 
only place that this thing is referenced in the entire app. Right? There's using statements for it in these files. Now that's, that's the only place that it's referenced is right there. Um, stop. .NET Restore. Because I bumped it to 215, it's going to install new versions of everything. .NET Build. So we build everything. You're freaking kidding me. Seriously? Seriously? Nope. you rebuild will nuke the whole thing from orbit no where is that coming from Assembly with the same name is already loaded. Where is it loading it from? Core Wiki CS Proj. Is it actually in here twice? No. What happens if I remove it? Nuke the repo. Mm, not sure I'm going to go that far. Nope. So this is the fallback folder. Why is it going down into this? It shouldn't be going into this. It should be installing its own copy locally. I have run... So, and, and it's a very good point, Molly, is that I keep running into this problem. If I'm running into this problem, you're running into this problem too. And there is no clear way to solve this because it's telling you, oh, make sure that you have this, blah, 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 blah. And this is all hidden from us. Um, here's what I'm going to do. What do we got there, Mr. Magoo? I'm not referencing different versions of it, though. Th 
The root cause is doing with mixing versions of Razer Tasks, which ship in the ASP.NET Core Razer design. Since Razer Tasks don't ship in the SDK, they can be configured per project. Try setting Use Razer Build Server to false in your CI. Okay, so they moved them. Hey, Yas05, thanks for the follow. Um, in 2.2, the tasks were moved into the SDK and the assembly is renamed to Microsoft.net.sdk.razor.tasks. The recommendation is to be on the leading patch release 212, which is a security problem. We would consider pointing, porting the change to Razor Design to ask the tasks from the SDK. Oh dear God. We're on 213 with the same issues. I The server had two SDKs installed. Two, one, let me bring this over. And removing the 2401 solved for us. So if I force it to 403, If I change my global JSON, okay, dot net restore. where it should explode. That worked. Is it going to run? Is it going to do the thing? Nope. So the pa coming back to what we what we learned earlier what we did earlier and Molly pointed out I applied a servicing fix to a project release instead of to the service release the production release the dev branch and I got in core wiki I got things now where I'm saying can I just ask for forgiveness there's a feature change that's happened somewhere in here that I don't have access to I upgraded the version of my NetCore app to solve that security patch, and I've inadvertently stumbled into a feature. This was 212. I think you're right, Molly. Semver gone wrong. There's an in, it feels like there's an incompatibility. If this works, you're absolutely right there, Molly. You are absolutely right. Yeah. That's not loud enough. That's not loud enough. How many other people are spinning their wheels on this? I completely agree, Robert Tables. I so agree with you. This is... Wow. And, and they're getting pushed into this from GitHub. Where'd that issue go? It was not there. Uh, do, 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 do. This. This is a significant 
issue. GitHub is pushing folks uh, with ASP.NET Core.app v2.1.0 to 2.1.3 to v2.1.4 and this issue is breaking builds with with no clear resolution. I'm not letting you close this. Do me a favor. That was not family friendly at all. No. You're right. There's a thing right there I need to hide. Um, oh, I'm going to paste a link to this video. Um, edit. We spent 30 minutes on... Uh, on a Twitch stream running into this and unable to solve for v2.1.4 we were forced to revert to 2.1.2 because of this issue so um, we will attach a link to this video right there. Um, but uh, do me a favor, I, I pasted a link into this issue. Yes, thank you, Robert Tables. That's exactly what I was going to say. Please go throw some plus ones. There's a little smiley face button here. You see it here. If you have a GitHub account, go over there and click that button and let, let them know that you are, uh, yeah. Thank you because they don't understand the severity when you make a change like this while there's a security patch in play it breaks people and telling them we'll just update your SDK is not something that you can do link it again without let's grab that directly there you go um, and you know what? It's going to anger some of my friends on the ASP.NET team. Um, but it's more important to me that you get clear error messages that tell you how to fix things. And when you apply a security patch, it doesn't force you to change other versions of things on your system. So... There we go. Thank you, friends. Um, I'm going to just change that to update to due to a security um, security issue. And this problem is breaking builds with no clear resolution. There you go. Can we get 4,007? <laughs> Let's not go quite that far. Um, but I'll probably hear this a little bit later today. We did hit 4,000 followers. Yes. Yes, Robert. So, I'm, I'm sorry about that, friends. Um, so, here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to push that change to the dev branch back up. Let me, well, let's make sure we can at least get this loaded. Uh, what? That's a, okay, so I also have this problem in the dev branch. Let's fix this in the dev branch also. Um, let me go back to dev and let's fix that. Yeah, 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 yeah. Um, that's fine for right now. Uh, we're gonna go back and fix that later. Back over here on the dev branch. Um, let's make sure that 
the watch build is running. Is that on a... And CS Proj. And da, 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 da. that's fine, that's fine. It's this one right here. I want to change that back to 212. Stop moving! Thank you. Have a good one, Mr. Magoo. All right, so I saved that. So here, it's restarting the build. And... Now it launches. Good. I'm going to recommit that. Um, reverted to 212. And that should also fix this over here. We should see that build kick off. Dev, I should see in the... Uh, did I push? I didn't push. Dummy. Gotta push. There it is. Cool. See one new build. Here it comes. All right. <laughs> oh, I pulled a whammy on that one. Thank you for, for grabbing that link. Who, who found that link for us? It was Mr. Magoo, and he already took off. All right. Um, fantastic. Oh, yeah. We're chewing up that processor right now. All right, so it's doing the restore and all that. And I, I don't need to turn this back onto a clean build anymore. I can fix that. Right? Remember we changed this and told it clean, true, all build directories? I'm going to turn off the clean. And just save that. We should be able to <clears throat> see this. Yeah, nothing's happening. It'll, it'll go. Uh, this would have taken anybody valuable time. It would. And I'm, I'm glad I was able to find it, figure out how to resolve it. It's not, a, in my mind, it's not an acceptable resolution. Um, but that combination telling people, oh, you need to upgrade to the preview, that's... I don't find that to be a very friendly resolution for this. Um, and you know what? It's it's well over time, and I, because we fought with that, we didn't have... I don't have time to really get down into going back into the... Uh, into the startup project. Let me jump back over there. Uh, merge dev. Yeah. And then this should be So I merged. That's just fine. Yeah. <coughs> had the t same problem with AKS and told to upgrade. Yeah, that's... 
Um, I hope we. I hope it gets fixed upstream. I really do. Because that's all right. Um, where I wanted to go, where I wanted to to dig in here, was back in uh, back in the first start project. Come on, where is it? Close up some of these. Not notifications. There it is. First start. Um, so is first start incomplete? If I change that back to true, I've got this error that's popping up and you see it here. Unable to reserve, resolve service core wiki first start, first start configuration while attempting to activate the index model. So we have this add first start configuration bit here and use first start configuration. Um, well, that's not right. I think I've got these mixed up here. Right, this is iService collection. Yeah, this should be add, not use. And then get rid of this. So that inside of startup, uh, close the application, don't need that. Add for start configuration should add that feature now appropriately so that it runs for us. And somewhere along the way, I, I broke it. There it goes. Now we've got those settings popping back up. Official Martin V, can you follow me back? I'm close to 1560. What do you do over there, Martin? You're hosting Fortnite right now. It's, um... And you haven't done anything yet. It's not in my space. I, I'm... We're, we're attempting... We're trying to promote more science and technology streams. Um... But if, if folks are interested in Fortnite, go ahead and check out Mar uh, Martin. But I'm, I'm going to take a pass on that. Kim, we need to get rid of those warnings. So the warnings during the build right here. If you want to submit a, a pull request, and this is also, right, CoreWiki depends on code generation greater than 212, not found. 213 was what was found. And this one, async method on create article from link. Well, you know what? We just started getting rid of those pages. I think we can just delete that page and be done with it. I'm going to do that. Ah, oh, come on. Why'd you have to go scrolling everywhere? Um, delete. And I think we're in a better place. Is this an open source project? Yes, it is. So we should see the rebuild and at least one of those errors go away. This is the code generation references. That should clean up when we get updated to the latest version. But that last one about the page is gone. And now if I come back here, this should refresh and we're good. All right. And my database options are still there and good. Oh, thanks for the link, Molly. Um, so I think that's where we're going to stop today. I'm going to just put in this quick commit here. App settings, app JSON. I didn't change that. Oh, no. That is what we are changing. <laughs> All right. Uh, no. Let's, uh, let's clean up here. 
filled past. Did it? Of course it passed. Ha <laughs> ha. All right. Let me put in these these couple changes here. Um, fixed broken reference to configuration. And we'll end up rebasing later and making that a little bit nicer. Oh, darn it. Stop that. There we go. All right. So we ran into one or two issues. We cleaned up and we and we we came to a really good solution, I think, for our wiki links issue. We turned it in, into just a simple route and we removed the need to put a slash wiki at a uh, link mm, path in the middle of our links. I think we've got a really good uh, set of steps here now where I think we're almost ready. We're, we The first start project, I think, is, is really close to having this done. If we save these settings when we're done editing on this page, save them into a configuration file, and then and then identify um, that we're not in a first start mode and route out of it, I think we're almost done at that point. And we'll be able to merge this in and declare this project complete. Um, you're gonna do some sort of practice now. <laughs> Thanks, Brave Cobra. Um, tomorrow, um, tomorrow I will not be broadcasting. My daughters have a, have an event. I am, I will be, we have our home horse show tomorrow and I am the in arena announcer. I will be announcing all day, all kinds of things at this horse show. It's going to be a, a long, very interesting and fun day at, at the farm. Um, and, uh, yeah, we'll have a good time with that. Let me tell you. Um, where did my search bar on Twitch go? How, how did I do that? How did I do that? Uh, there we go. Um, let's see. Let's see who we can raid in the science and technology space. Who's broadcasting right now besides me? Um, Honest Dan Games is out there. Um, Jessica Mack is broadcasting. You know what? Jessica's kind of fun. We can go over to Jessica. Let's see. Is there somebody with less viewers that we want to promote? Now, I'll tell you what. Let's re let's promote and let's go over to um to Jessica Mack if you're interested in hanging around. We will automatically transfer over to her slash raid. There we go. Um, you don't have to do anything. It'll automatically transfer us over there in just a second. Thanks so much, everybody, for tuning in. I appreciate you joining me. It was pretty cool. Uh, we got about 60 folks that are ready to go over there. Uh, take care. Have a good one. The video from today will be over there on YouTube just a little bit later. Thanks so much. I'll see you on Tuesday. Take care.